Good evening, Valpo and our committed viewers from all across the country. It's Friday, and not only does that mean it's time for another episode of Sparked, but tonight we have something special. Yes, we are kicking off Sparked Season 2. Coming up later tonight, how is a robot in China looking to revolutionize the news industry? How did Apple make the news at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, despite not participating as an exhibitor? And how is one student organization able to get a bird's eye view of the competition? All that and more find out next on Sparked. New year, new season. I even have a new suit. Welcome back to the show, keeping you up to date on everything in the world of science, technology, and innovation. Colin Luft here with VU TV Sparked, and we have a wonderful show for you this evening. We have some brand new segments coming up, so make sure to stay tuned as we debut our Sparked Spotlight series, as well as continuing with another Sparked experiment. One thing sticking around in 2019 is our Fast Five, so before we do everything else, Let's dive right in as we take a look at what happened while we were away. Number five, one day when you watch the news, you could be seeing a virtual journalist. China State Hello, News Agency everyone. debuted Many a virtual anchor. The artificial intelligence presenter is designed to deliver the news 24 hours a day. It is modeled on a real-life Chinese anchor, and it tries to simulate human voice, facial expressions, and gestures. The developer believes the technology will reduce costs and improve efficiency. Especially for websites and social media, it has not said if any of China's state-run TV channels have shown an interest in using the technology. My colleagues here at VTV might not not be too happy at this news, but you just can't help but marvel at some of the incredible progress we have made in the field of artificial intelligence. I mean, we are truly living in the future. And number four, astronomers have recorded more than a dozen new radio waves coming from far outside the Milky Way galaxy. The journal Nature published the researchers' work. The radio flashes only last a millisecond. Rapid bursts themselves are not rare in space, but this was the only time that a second one was found to repeat. Now, coming from the same location as the first one recorded. And why the bursts happen remain a mystery. Moving on to number three, it can track steps, read messages, and play music. Sure, wearable tech is fun, but it can also help save your life. One New Hampshire man credits his Apple Watch for detecting an irregular heartbeat. Charisse Leclerc has the story. You just put your finger here. Barry Maiden is a self-described tech geek. It's part of why he wanted to buy himself this Apple Watch, but he also keeps a close eye on his health after suffering from a brain injury. He originally got it because they have a new fall risk um, app, right? Yeah. Where if he were to fall and I'm not nearby, the fall sensor will sense that he fall and then call 911. But in this case, it actually ended up detecting something that Barry didn't even have on his radar. And it said, you looks like your heart is an AFib, you should contact your doctor. AFib, or atrial fibrillation, is an irregular heartbeat that if left untreated, or in Barry's case, undetected, could lead to blood clots, causing a stroke or other heart complications. The watch showing Barry and his wife Tara what his actual heartbeat looked like, he finally decided to go to the hospital. When I got to the ER, they did an, e an actual EKG on a cart with the, the, the real deal. Sure enough, the medical professionals told Barry the same thing. He was in AFib. It would probably have taken me longer to get to the doctors had I not had something actually telling me that something's not right. He was sedated. His heart essentially stopped and restarted by doctors. Now this small piece of technology suddenly seems like so much more to them. Instead of being just kind of a, a toy or a tchotchke, I think I'll probably pay closer attention to it. Just grateful, blessed. The electrocardiogram feature on the Apple Watch does have limitations. It can't detect most heart rhythm abnormalities or electrical changes associated with a heart attack. And here's number two, staying with medical technology, a Wisconsin veteran paralyzed from the waist down took an important step forward in life 
both figuratively and literally. Aisha Morales explains. He's competed in 91 wheelchair marathons and is working to kayak the entire coastline of Lake Superior. At 59 years old, Dean Juntinen says staying active makes him happy. Kayaking has replaced the hiking for me. It gets me out in the wilderness and um, it's a great workout. I've paddled as much as 50 miles in one day. Paralyzed for nearly 30 years, he's finally Beautiful. going from standing. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice. To walking. Beautiful. There we go. Dean is part of a nationwide study. One of the physical therapists told me, you got to think of it like dancing. And I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. I never could dance. She said, well, how about cross country skiing? I said, yeah, that I can do. So uh, I started kind of transferring the weight and it worked out real good. He's the first veteran from the Milwaukee VA taking a robotic exoskeleton like this home for four months. This is a fully powered exoskeleton. Um, so it is set by the computer. We can adjust how long it takes a step, the delay between steps. Um, but really it's kind of Dean making sure that his balance is right over the robot and shifting his weight appropriately um, as we would when we were walking. These steps and training uh, happening inside the Lambo field go. atrium. There you go. Other veterans with a spinal cord injury who qualify are welcome to join the research. The goal is to see how useful this pricey technology can be. Relearning a sense of balance is a challenge, Dean says, but yeah, it's his inner drive really well. that keeps him taking Good. one step right on top of it after another. I'm loving it. It's a tremendous workout. I might actually start matching my marathon times from when I was in my 40s. I've only lost about six minutes over the years, but maybe, maybe I'll get that back with this robot. There are 160 veterans across 15 different VA centers participating in the exoskeleton research study. And finally, at number one, hoverboards may not be a reality yet, but if you've also wanted a pair of self-lacing shoes since seeing Back to the Future 2, your luck is about to get better. Now, Nike unveiled its newest self-lacing technology called Nike Adapt BB. The self-lacing basketball shoe is controlled by an app, and it's part of a product family called Fit Adapt, which that uses apps and firmware that can continually be updated. Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics wore the shoes against the Toronto Raptors, and Nike has bigger plans once the kinks are ironed out. The company plans to expand Fit Adapt into other sports and lifestyle products, and if all of this seems like deja vu, you may be remembering when Nike made self-lacing shoes modeled after the ones in Back to the Future 2 back in 2016. Those special edition shoes were never sold and only 89 pairs were given away in a lottery. The company also sells a self-lacing shoe called HyperAdapt, which cannot be updated and does not use an app. And that's it for this week's Fast Five. Coming up after the break, a recap of this year's Consumer Electronics Show with the latest in technology and innovation. And after that, stay tuned for a DIY dorm room decoration. Isn't that a tongue twister? Spark returns after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back. For over 50 years, the Consumer Electronics Show has been the largest and most influential tech event in the world, where the entire technology ecosystem gathers to conduct business, launch products, build brands, and partner to solve some of today's most pressing societal challenges. Back in January, CES 2019 saw more than 4,500 exhibitors launch this transformative tech to more than 180,000 attendees. This encompassed 5G connectivity, artificial intelligence, augmented and virtual reality, smart city sports, robotics, and more. CES 2019 featured brand new and expanded exhibit areas, 250 conference sessions, 1,100 speakers, and more than 1,200 startups from over 50 countries. Let's recap some of the top moments from this year's event. Starting up, number five, I think most appropriately, is the 5G ecosystem. Keynote addressed by CEO Hans Vestberg of Verizon discussed the future of 5G. Quote, 5G will change everything. 5G is the promise of so much more than what we have seen from wireless technology. 5G speed is said to be 300 megabits per second, up to 60 times faster than current 4G LTE speeds and not only can 5G produce a quantum leap in speed, reliability and connectivity, but it enables the next generation of technology, bringing virtual and augmented reality to the next level. And next, if you're like many Americans, you probably wouldn't mind having a bigger TV, but how big is big enough? 
Samsung is rolling out a massive 219-inch TV at the CES show in Las Vegas. Now, let's do some quick math. That's a screen measuring more than 18 feet. So it's called The Wall. This TV uses a technology called Micro LED, which creates a brighter image using less energy than current televisions. For those of you who think a screen like this is better suited to a stadium than a living room, a 75-inch modular version is also coming out. You can either watch that by itself or buy additional screens to snap together and make a bigger one. Sony, TCL, and Hisense also show TVs 75 inches and larger at this year's event. Moving on to number three. Now, Apple was not an exhibitor at this year's event. However, the company still managed to send a message by putting up some local advertisements focused on privacy. And this renewed focus comes in the wake of data leaks and hackings affecting some big name corporations and marred the reputation of some prominent social networking sites such as Facebook. We covered that back on episode two, cybersecurity. And at number two, for the sports fans out there, CES featured the Sports Zone, which featured athletes and industry experts as they explore the future of sports technology. This included the quantified athlete immersive fan experience, smart venues, and esports. Not only that, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver sat down with Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey for a discussion at this year's event, and they discussed the future of their partnership and how the NBA will continue to pursue the latest in sports technology. And finally, at number one was all the incredible new product launches unveiled at CES 2019. Over the last 50 years, CES has been part of more than 700,000 product launches. This year saw some innovative products introduced using artificial intelligence, such as MixFit, which uses AI to personalize nutrient-rich drinks. And based in France, auto company Drust helps transform drivers into super drivers. By using AI cloud software, their technology helps drivers avoid road hazards before they even occur. 2019 CES Innovation Award honoree SuperDrive makes it possible to predict accidents by analyzing human, mechanical, and contextual features. And finally, Kaizen, the world's first personal AI assistant in hearing care, analyzes the user's behaviors, needs, and preferences to optimize sound settings depending on the environment and the situation. That's it for this year's Consumer Electronics Show recap. Up next, grab your empty soda bottles or just sit back and enjoy as Sparked presents a fun project. This will light up your room at home or your dorm here at school. And later, we will take a look at what a group of electrical and computer engineering students have been working on. You're watching Sparked on VU TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's time for another Sparked experiment. If you missed our soda bottle tornado last time, don't worry. We have another fun project for you tonight. All you need is an empty soda bottle. For today, I'm just going to use a small bottle. But if you'd rather go big or go home, feel free to do this with a two liter bottle. You'll also want some vegetable oil. The bigger the soda bottle, the more oil you will need. You'll also want your favorite color food coloring. Last time we used red for the tornado, so today we're going to try blue an effervescent tablet such as Alka-Seltzer. And if you want to spice things up, add some glitter. And lastly, but still important, is some water. Now, first we're going to take the water, make sure it's clean, and we're going to fill it about three-fourths of the way with the vegetable oil. Definitely want to be generous. And we made sure to cover the table with some napkins this time so we don't have another spill. Like last time, if you missed that, go check out Season 1, Episode 4, the season finale. We attempted to make a soda bottle tornado, and it didn't work out too, too well. After filling it up with the vegetable oil, grab your water. And I'm going to be extra careful because we have a big jug of water. We're going to fill it up all the way to the top. Okay, and after that, it's time to throw in our food coloring. So we got some blue, usually about five to ten drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think. That should be good. We will spice it up. We got some glitter right here. And if we get it opened up, a oh, little spilled, but that's okay. That's why we got our, our napkins. Coming out the wrong side. And that's plenty and plenty of glitter. 
After that is the important part in order to make the effect. We're going to take an Alka-Seltzer tablet and we're going to break it up into about seven pieces. And that is what is actually going to cause the lava lamp effect. We're going to drop it in. And we're going to start to see the effect happen. Close it up. We're going to rock it back and forth like so. That'll get the food coloring mixed in. It'll mix in the tablet, the glitter, the water and oil is mixing now. See, it's turning nice and blue. And we really have an awesome lava lamp. You can see the blue little clusters at the bottom. If you really want to make this effect happen, take your phone, pull up the flashlight, throw it right underneath. And that is really cool. This is perfect for any dorm room. It's perfect for any gift if you want to give somebody. And it's just a DIY lava lamp. Coming up, final thoughts and the quote of the day. But before that, we'll check out some local campus news. Find out how you can win up to $1,000 cash and new to Sparked in 2019, the Sparked Spotlight. Stick around. Sparked will be right back. Welcome back. Last week, I caught up with Jacob Gearing, a junior computer engineering major, and we talked about his IEEE drone project that is entirely student built with a special feature giving them a unique look at the competition. Let's take a look at tonight's Sparked Spotlight. In the halls of Gellerson, student engineers are hard at work. One group of students from IEEE is working on a very special project with some innovative features that might surprise you. I originally started out being an Arduino microcontroller based drone and then it turned to Raspberry Pi. These major changes early on were not an obstacle the team couldn't overcome. And eventually we ended up just discovering that it was cheaper and easier to buy a dedicated uh, flight controller board RA made. Last year, the team spent their time carefully measuring, calculating, and testing the first drone. We learned a lot about how the parts work together. Um, we learned a lot about the dimensions we needed, the um, amount of thrust we needed, the battery life we needed. This hard work and research paid off and was able to help the team make an even better drone this year. It is a much faster, much lighter uh, drone. It even has a first-person view-based camera on it. That camera connects to these goggles so you can see exactly what the drone sees in real time. Here we were able to take a look at exactly how the camera works with the drone in flight. Jacob and his team have bold plans for what's ahead including the Midwest Robotics Design Competition, or MRDC, and much more. I hope to see us uh, continue to do more competitions outside of MRDC, possibly uh, some drone races. My favorite part of this project is to see the excitement on people's faces when uh, things work out the way they did, when their hard work you know, um, pays off. Make sure to tune in next time. Spark Spotlight will feature another one of IEEE projects this year, a student-built 3D printer. You won't want to miss that. And earlier this evening, Valpo Innovates 2.0 Safety and Security kicked off. Teams develop and present a concept and compete to win up to $1,000 cash grand prize. This year's competition is sponsored by the College of Business, College of Engineering, Innovation Hub, and the Institute for Leadership and Service. And TED Week is just two weeks away. Tired Engineers Day, or TED, is not just one day, but a full week of fun games and activities. This is hosted by Tau Beta Pi for the College of Engineering. It's the best way to relax, have fun, and celebrate National Engineers Week. And with all that out of the way, it sends us right to final thoughts. Stay tuned for the quote of the day and more. It's time for the quote of the day. Today's quote of the day is from Dr. Alfred Spector. Dr. Spector attended Harvard University for his undergraduate studies and received his PhD in computer science from Stanford. Previously, Dr. Spector was a professor of computer science at Carnegie Mellon University before working at IBM and later the vice president of research at Google. Currently, Dr. Spector is the chief technology officer at Two Sigma Investments. I had the pleasure of hearing Dr. Spector give a lecture last Monday titled Data Science, Opportunities and Challenges, where today's quote of the day comes from. 
The Sparks quote of the day, learning from the present may imprison the future. That's from Dr. Alfred Spector. As always, make sure to go check out our VUTV social media. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, all of those at Valpo VUTV. Make sure to visit our website, valpovutv.org, for new and exclusive content from all of our many shows, including our premiere Monday evening newscast, 15 News at 5, our weather show, Weather with Blake and Heather, and one of our newest programs, What You're Reading with Region Leaders. And if you missed season one or just can't get enough of Sparked, you can always go back and watch all Sparked episodes over and over again or check out our other original VUTV programming at valpovutv.org slash shows. That's it for now. I'm Colin Luft, and this has been VUTV Sparked, the show keeping you up to date on everything in the world of science, technology, and innovation. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you again next time. Thanks for watching.